I mean, maybe there are things in my classroom that I can do to, to motivate students, but a lot of it, um, I'm, I'm not the only stakeholder there. Um, you know, there, there is something to be said for, um, for, for, for families to be, you know, held accountable there as well. A lot of times where I don't even meet a parent, you know, I don't see them. I don't even know what they look like and then, you know, something happens and then I have to call them and it's just like you get no support because they don't know, they don't know you. And I feel like if parents are, are made to be a part of their child's education, then we'd have a better chance at reaching more students. It's still maybe they wouldn't be proficient or advanced, but they'd have that support system at home. From a parent perspective, what makes a charter school different is that we really value working with parents and there are a lot of high expectations for parents. One of the five core values of the Alliance is to work with parents as partners. And in order to make sure that happens, we require that all of our parents volunteer 40 hours a year. I think parents are kind of an untapped resource. If we can get creative and actually start to have a meaningful dialogue with parents, not just telling them what to do, but actually listening to them, uh, I'm amazed at the ideas that I could possibly have with parents to work uh, to support their students. It's free babysitting service for some of these parents. You know, they, they've got to go to work for, you know, send my kid off to school, you know, they're your problem. Yeah, I've, I've had parents, and it's, it's your problem to deal with my kid. I'm at work. So whatever happens, you know, just deal with it. So, I mean, sometimes you run into that attitude. So, and then you wonder why people have this public perception of, you know, why teachers are so bad. Well, we're not. We have to deal with a lot. Whether or not a student is able to achieve is based on more than just whether or not the teacher is qualified. Parents have even more influence in a child's life than a teacher does. Although a teacher is spending many more waking hours Monday through Friday with those children, the first and foremost important teachers in a child's life are his or her parents. If a parent values education, models for that child how important it is to take advantage of the opportunities in school, that child is going to be far more likely to succeed. If a parent doesn't value it, then probably that child is not going to be motivated to work hard. What about student? What about student accountability? Student accountability. That's a that's an interesting topic with regard to parents, because oftentimes parents expect the teachers to do more and more and more to help that child succeed, when oftentimes a child is not motivated to engage in the learning process. It's almost the same idea of taking a horse and leading it to water but you can't force it to drink. Either the child wants to participate, wants to learn, and will work hard and buckle down and, and do their best, or they won't. Unfortunately, the law definitely sides most often with the student and the parents. If there is something going wrong in the educational process, whether or not it's the teacher's fault, um, pretty much it's the teacher that's going to be held accountable because that's the only legal recourse there is in our educational system. We need parents to be a part of this whole effort. Uh, even if they have the education of a second or a third grade from another country, they can still be a part of this. Our parents are still our most important teachers and they will always be our first teachers. Yes, exactly. The incredible Lopez family. They are what is right about public education got them all. Mm -hmm. Look at you. Okay, <laughs> these are the Lopez's. E and I'm going to ask you your secret because your children are very hard working in school. My Spanish is very bad and they are focused on their lessons and their homework is very good and I want all your secrets. Tell me what you do with your children. What do you tell them? The homework is more her because I work and do not have the time that she has. When they go to school, do you tell them, hey, you need to be focused, or are they just like that? Always, in the mornings, before we leave the house, 
I ask them, do you have to behave in class and give lots of attention so you can learn? When I drop them off at school, when they get out of the car, I ask them again. I can see they put a lot of time in their homework. It's not, how do you say? <laughs> there aren't yeah, lots of I mean, smudges. So neat. When I sit with them to do their homework, I watch. For example, when they are in first grade, second grade, I watch to see if they are writing ugly or with big letters or too close together or too far apart. And I try to explain to them, this is not good, erase it and do it again. Or I put down another booklet and they try to do it. And I keep telling them to do it again and to do it better. And they say, I can't. And I say, yes, you can. And it turns out well. Yes, it turns out very well. That's the truth. Your daughter is going to college, right? Yes, it's her final year of high school. When our first child, our daughter, went to school, she didn't speak English, and she was five when she went to kindergarten. She spoke only Spanish. There are people that say, if you're not rich, if your children do not speak English when they go to school, if the parents do not speak English, if the parents did not go to college, that the children are not going to progress. But I can see in your children that when the parents are giving help, and are giving attention to what the children are doing in school, that the children can progress. And they understand that school and education is very important. What can you say to all the people? School before everything. Because it's the one thing that is going to serve them in the future that's going to help them for their betterment, not for their parents. For this reason, we support them in any way we can in studying and in school. You are doing a great job, an incredible work with your children. They are such good children. And I want to talk to the children. I had you in my class. Okay, were you a perfect angel all the time? <laughs> no? Oh, you're so honest. I love that about you. What do your parents do to help you succeed in school? They just like, they just told me always to be quiet. And I try. And every time like I talk, I would, I would keep that in my mind that they would tell me to be quiet. And so you're able to focus and you're able to learn mm -hmm. what you are being taught. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and tell me about yourself. I'm going to be going to college and I'm going to study liberal arts, which is teaching elementary because, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Yay. I've had like a lot of brothers and I like to like help them with their homework and just stuff like that. And I really appreciate that. Yeah. And tell me what your parents have done to help you succeed in school. Do your parents tell you how important education is? Yes. And when you go to school, are you well rested and ready to focus? That's awesome. Hello, young man. <laughs> tell me, what have your parents done to help you have success in school? Um, they always told me to study my multiplication table and to focus. And you do that, and I appreciate it. Gracias, Lopez family. <laughs> Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Say bye. Think about the kind of parent who would be willing to sign a contract saying they are going to volunteer for 40 hours during that school year. Or if they can't volunteer at the school for 40 hours, they're going to take their child to the library or the museum or they're going to come to parenting classes. That is phenomenal. That's the way we create successful schools and successful students.